is tonight and all the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears comes down to this very moment. And like snafus, um, like, like for example, my middle-aged Mary, she's been having contractions for about six, 16 hours. My Joseph hasn't memorized all his lines. Uh, Amy? Mary, my, <laughs> my dear Mary, it's been a long journey. My wise man is convinced that the nativity set will collapse. And my shepherd can't find a lemon for his tea. Articulatory agility as a marvelous ability, manipulating with dexterity that... We are telling the most beautiful and important story that's ever been told about an event that changed the We've lost the lamb. Mm -hmm. Quick, everyone make lamb noises. Call her back to the flock. He knows the lamb's a dog, right? Medical experts actually do not recommend this method for uh, dealing with panic attacks. But my mom recommends lavender behind the ears. Get away from me. I'm calling an ambulance. I think I'll be fine. It's for me. Merry Christmas! Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Thank you guys so much for coming. All right, places, everyone! It's time. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. I have this long-held tradition, I guess you could call it. Every year during the performance, I, uh, I step off the stage and leave the building. I just want God to do what God does. And the shepherds came with haste, and they and found Mary, Mary and Joseph, Joseph and, the and the baby lying in the manger. Doesn't matter where you see the nativity story, whether it's on a street corner or, or in a church, or even on your neighbor's mantle. When you see it, you have to consider it then and there. Are you willing to kneel at the manger? Will you believe in the miracle of Christmas, the glory of Christmas? Trust that this is the way that God chose to save us all. And all who heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned. Glorifying and worshiping God for all the things that they have seen and heard as it was said unto them. Amen. My daughter is three years old, and she and I were uh, walking yesterday and uh, through our neighborhood, and we saw a couple uh, manger scenes. And every time we'd pass a manger scene, she, and she'd say, she'd say, Pop, Pop, what is that? What is, what's, what is that? And sometimes there was wise men at the manger scene. Uh, most of the manger scenes had wise men there, uh, maybe a shepherd, and of course, Mary and Joseph and the baby. And uh, trying to explain that to a three-year-old, over and over and over again and not really sure if she gets it okay and it just got me to thinking that you know I've heard this story over and over and over again and I'm still not sure if I get it how about you are you with me here 
Come on, we need this. We, we need to hear the story over and over again so that the good news finds a place in our heart, okay, so that Jesus can change our lives and so that we can truly celebrate Christmas. Amen? So in the hierarchy of Christmas ornaments, let's talk about orna- Christmas ornaments for, for a moment because in the hierarchy of Christmas ornaments, ornaments the position of honor goes to the one that's placed at the top of the tree. In most, ha- in most households, the distinction belongs to, drum roll please, the star. The star. I know, I know some of you said angel, but in all the polls that have been taken, the angel comes in as a distant second to the most popular tree topper. And there, there, there's no serious contenders after that. Although the Star Wars Death Star tree topper is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But, but it's not theologically congruent, so, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. An aspect of the glory of Christmas is that everybody can be the star of the Christmas story. Not, no, not the star. We're not talking celebrity status here. We're, it's more like, more like the kid that gets to wear the yellow cardboard star outfit. You know what I'm talking about? That might or might not have some sprinkles on it, you know, some glitter on it. But who's not entrusted with any true light source because you remember the flashlight fiasco. You know, but the actor, the star, just pretends to shine and leaves a messy trail of glitter wherever he or she goes. That's us. In God's story, we get to be his star. We get to be the star that points people to the star, Jesus, the true glory of Christmas. I I hope you, if you haven't got that yet in this Advent series, we are not the glory of Christmas. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are not the glory of Christmas. Okay, let them know. No matter how many gifts they think they have under the tree, they are not the glory, all right? Jesus is the star. He's the true glory of Christmas. Have you ever noticed noticed the descriptor of the star in in the Christmas story? I believe Trevor read this uh, in his message last Sunday, but Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, listen to the descriptor of the star. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that same time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, listen to this, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. We have, we have seen his star. The star pointing others to the Savior is described as the Savior's star. It was his star that rose in the sky and that pointed those seeking Jesus to the place where he could be found. Now, just stop right there. It was his star that helped direct people to the place where Jesus could be found. So if you and me cast into the role of his star, that means that we're continuing, we must continue to shine, and we must continue to guide others that are seeking the Savior Maybe they don't even know about him, but that we are constantly pointing, directing to him. Does that make sense? See, this last, the last character of Christmas, as I mentioned in the very first Sunday of Advent, is really not a character. It's, I know, it's a set piece. The star is in every, it goes on the top of our tree, but but it's, it's essentially just a set piece. But for you and me, if we're going to play the star, if we're going to be cast as the star, we need to have the same function that the star of Christ had, to guide those that are seeking the Savior all the way 
until they find him. That's what our lives should do. The star of the story didn't stop shining, though, and guiding the wise men at verse 2. In fact, the star continued shining. After they left, left King Herod, the star continued to shine on the way to Jesus. While the journey was being made, the star continued to shine for those wise men so that they could get to Jesus. In fact, it, if you go down at, to verse 9, this is what it says. After this interview... With King Herod, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The star in the sky is kind of like Joel, the director in, in the play that we just watched a few minutes ago, The Glory of Christmas. Okay, he gave directions so that everyone knew their place. The director kept them in character, right? He kept them in character. He challenged them to stick to the script so that they could point the audience to the main point of the story. And once the director did his part, all that's left is for God to do what God does. See, all we, all we have to do is shine, friends. This is, we just need to shine. And the source of our light isn't even from, it, is, it isn't even our source, right? How many of you had, had to buy batteries at some point this uh, season? Anybody have to buy batteries? Okay. We have a limitless supply of light because the Bible describes God as light, and that in him there is no darkness, neither shadow of turning. So all we have to do is reflect his light, his constant source of light. We're not the source. He is. All we have to do is, be, to, is to be faithful to reflect him, to shine the light so that others can see. Later on in the gospel account, Matthew quotes Jesus' teaching about what it means to be the, the illumination in a dark setting. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14, 15, and 16, this is what it says. It says, you are the light of the world. Isn't that interesting? He says, you, talking to his followers, his disciples, you are the light of the world. We don't sing songs like that, do we? We sing, we sing, Jesus, you are the light of the world. And Jesus is saying back, no, no, you are the light of the world. It's almost like an argument in the midst of worship, Josh. It's almost like, no, you're the light of the world. And he says, no, you're the light of the world. Come on, guys, get it. You're the light of the world. It's like he's saying, I'm not there. You are. All you have to do is reflect the source. You're the light of the world, like a city, he says, on a hilltop that can't be hidden. No one puts a lamp under, uh, uh, lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. That's silly, Jesus says. Well, he didn't say that part, but you know what I mean. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand so that it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, that's what Jesus said, in the same way, let your good deeds shine, shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now, I'm just going to tell you that it's easier for Jesus to shine the light than it is for us. But that's not his plan. That is not his plan. His plan is for you to shine the light. That's it. His plan isn't, isn't, you know, just that he's going to shine the light. He wants you to shine the light. The, the glory of Christmas is that you get to be his star that helps to illuminate a dark world. You shine as long as it takes for those who need to meet, to, to, to meet Jesus to do so. Okay? You just keep shining. And just like the seed that, that we talked about a few weeks ago that the sower scatters over the soil, remember, indiscriminately, am I right? This, we gather the seed and we just throw it everywhere. We don't worry about the condition of the soil. Come on. We just scatter the seed. And in the same way, the light just shines indiscriminately. 
We just shine wherever we go. The shade is off, right? Have you noticed that? If you take the lamp shade off, more light, okay? The shade is off, and we just shine wherever we go. And unlike the kid that's playing the star in the play, you know, that, that has no lines to speak and only has to stand somewhere in the vicinity of the nativity scene, how we live, the words we say, what we do, the experiences that we share with, with others, that is what God will use to shine a light on what's missing in someone else's life. When we shine, it's not about us. It's about his glory. We've got to make sure that people know that we're not the source, right? It's about pointing people to God. When we make our lives available, when we shine bright, okay, when we burn bright, then God can do what God does. Just like we heard in the director, just God will do what God can do. When we worship, when we adore, when we follow Jesus as Savior and Lord, God draws people to our lives, not because we can save them, but because we know the Savior, because we know the source of the light. That's why it's not about us. It can't be about us. But our lives, our words, our works, our worship, all should point people to Jesus. Listen to this. If we're faithful to shine, Jesus will be faithful to save. You don't have to save anybody. Come on, shouldn't that just shift all the weight off of you? You don't have to save anybody. All you have to do is shine. So what we want to do, listen, uh, what, what, what I want to do this evening, and I know we have the house lights up, but I'm going to ask you to bring those house lights down, um, if you would, because what I'd like you to do is I'd, I'd like you to, this is a, this is a little dicey, because I'm going to ask you to move with fire, okay? I realize that I'm just, this is, uh, this is kind of scary, but what I want you to do the, the middle candle is the Christ candle in the, in the Advent. So Jesus, he is the light of the world, but he's told us that we are the light of the world. So what I'd like you to do is, and you don't have to because it's a little sunk down there, but I'd like you to at least come up and light your candle Remain up here together, okay? Please be wary of the wax, okay? We have these little, little uh, reservoirs, but be wary. Don't tip too far, okay? But light your candle, and then if you, we're going to close and worship together up here, okay? Come on, we see the metaphor of being light in darkness in the Bible over and over again. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. Jesus said it in John 8, 12. He said, he, he was speaking to the people and he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. Paul wrote the Corinthians, the second Corinthians chapter four, verse six, for God said, let there be light in the darkness. And he's made, he has made our light, or his light shine in our hearts so that we can know the glory of God that's seen in the face of Jesus. The apostle Peter, he said, for you are a chosen people. You're, you are royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he has called you, where? Out of where? Out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Amen. So how did the star earn that privileged spot? That privileged position at the top of the Christmas decorating scheme? After, after all, the historical account is not in any other gospel. It's only in Matthew, as, as Trevor pointed out. 
The star isn't featured anywhere else but with the wise men. The star doesn't really have lead billing. It's not even mentioned in Luke's pretty detailed gospel account. Here's another miracle. Listen, here's another Christmas miracle. Listen to this. God uses a star in the sky to alert men that the Messiah has arrived. God then uses the star in the sky to lead the wise men to the home where Mary, Joseph, and the baby are living. The star is just another part of the glory of Christmas. Just one of the, one of the many people and set pieces that illustrate the beauty of God's miraculous plan. You, your life illustrates the beauty of God's miraculous plan. Are you listening? Your life represents the beauty of God's miraculous plan. That though the world is in darkness, you are the light of the world. God's calling us to literally do what the star did in the Christmas story. Shine bright in a dark setting and lead people to Jesus. We don't deserve to participate in the glory of Christmas, but the very one that we celebrate has made our participation possible. Amen?